I wanted to talk about the, the whole interest rate thing more generally. Um, <coughs> after the GFC, in order to make everything sustainable, how did the banking system push interest rates lower? The way they push interest rates lower is they issue things called bonds. Basically, governments borrow money by issuing bonds. That's essentially what happens. Large corporations borrow money by issuing bonds. And bonds, you can think of them as being kind of like a term deposit, which is traded. And as interest rates move around, the value of the term deposit moves around. So if interest rates go down, the value of the term deposit goes up. And the reason I say this is, imagine you've got a bond that's issued a 3% interest rate. Okay? What's actually happening is if interest rates go down to 2%, that 3% bond becomes a valuable commodity because it's got a 3% interest rate, but the current rates in the market are 2 So that bond is actually paying more interest than current bonds would pay. Yes? So what happens is the value of the bond actually goes up. So the bond becomes a tradable commodity. What the central banks did after the GFC is they went out to the market and they said, we are going to buy X billion dollars worth of bonds for the next whenever. We're going to buy bonds every single month and um, we're just letting you all know that we're going to buy these bonds. So what the market goes and does is it says, the central banks are going to come, they're going to print money out of thin air and they're going to buy bonds. Guess what we're going to do? We're going to go and snap up all the bonds out there now and we're going to wait for the central bank to come and buy them off us. So they front run the central banks. The central banks come along and they buy all the bonds. Great. So the month's over. So at the end of the next, when the next month arrives, the same thing happens. All the bonds out there, all the market goes and snaps them all up and waits for the central bank to come and buy them. And the central bank is saying, by talking about buying bonds in the future, what they're saying to all the market participants is, go off and buy all these bonds because no matter what you pay for them, we're going to come and take them off your hands. And that's what made the bond prices start going through the roof. There was a buyer standing there willing to buy all the bonds no matter the price because the buyer were the central banks who could buy whatever they liked. They could just print money and buy. So what happened was that caused bond prices to go up. That caused the central banks, they were busy buying more and more bonds. And with all these bonds that they're buying, remember the people who are, who are participating in this bond market are making money for nothing. Eh? They know the central banks are going to come and buy these bonds. So they go and snap them all up, sell them to the central banks. Snap them all up, sell them to the central banks. The central banks are buying more and more and more and more and more of these things. And in return for the bonds, they're handing the people who sell them the bonds cash. So you've got this explosion of cash in the banking system. And trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars of made up money are handed into the banking system in return for these bonds. And interest rates go down. You see? Because this is how it works. As bond prices go up, interest rates go down. That's how the financial system works. So essentially, the central banks have forced interest rates to the floor, right? In the hope that all this money that floods into the financial system is going to stimulate economic activity and is going to make the economy start working again. The problem is we're now 11, 12 years later. Interest rates are zero. Bond prices are through the roof. Stock prices are through the roof. House prices are through the roof. Every single asset is through the roof. And interest rates are zero. And now we're talking about, we need some emergency measures now because the economy is sputtering. Why is the economy sputtering? Why is the real economy not working? Why is all this money not working. 
The reason why it's not working is because it's all based on this wonderful theory called the trickle-down effect. These people believe that by taking gobs of money and throwing it at the wealthiest in society, which are the bankers, the ones who are right close to the money spigot, by throwing all the money at these people, what's going to happen is these people are going to become obscenely rich. And as a result of them becoming obscenely rich, the trickle-down effect is going to mean some of that money comes down to the real economy and the real economy starts working again. It's not working. It's not happening. The obscenely rich are getting obscenely richer. And the obscenely richerers are getting obscenely richer or richer. But the money's not trickling down. Why is it not trickling down? Think about it. The whole thing's a scam. If you are a multi-billionaire, and if you have got six yachts, and if you already travel around and stay in the fanciest hotels, and if you already have got five fancy mansions, if you get given a whole lot more money, what are you going to do? Start traveling more. Start buying more jets. No. What's going to happen is you're just going to become richer. You're just going to have asset values going up and up and up and up and up and up. doesn't mean you're going to go spending more and hiring more servants and all that. To a point you are. But after a while, you know, enough's enough. Meanwhile, down on Main Street, the whole economy is not functioning anymore. Wages are stagnating. Um, people aren't getting any savings for their money in the bank. So people are not spending as much. Everything's grinding to a halt. And these guys who run the central banks, their idea of fixing the problem is to throw more gobs of money at the wealthiest because we're waiting for this trickle-down effect to kick in. Now, if asset prices for just a second stop going up, if they stop going up, if house prices stop going up, if any asset value stops going up, we have a different kind of a problem now. So if they're going up, we've got a huge wealth gap opening up. And if they stop going up, the trickle-down effect's going to stop. These people are going to start feeling poor. The economy's going to collapse because actually people are all sitting there thinking, Christ, they're getting poorer now because all the asset prices are coming down. They've created a monstrosity of the like you can't imagine. And there's no way out. And when you flip over to the real world, and I've brought this point up before, when you consider that money is nothing more than a claim on resources, it's a very interesting concept, you need to think of this. If someone gives you 500 bucks, what is that 500 bucks worth to you? That 500 bucks can be traded for something real. A table, a chair, some services, a couple of TVs, resources. So what's actually happening is by printing gobs of money and throwing them at the economy and having them go into inflating asset prices, what's happening is the whole world is thinking it's richer than it is. The whole world has got many, many, many more claims on resources than they had a few years ago. The real world hasn't got bigger. The real world hasn't got more minerals and more land space and all that. The real world hasn't had that. What's happened instead is the imaginary banker money world has now got twice as much money out there in the form of asset prices than it had before. So all these people who are sitting on these houses that are worth six million are thinking that that six million dollar house at some point is turnable into something else. I can sell my $6 million house. I can take my $6 million. I can go on ocean cruises. I can live high on the hog. I can have Wagyu beef every night. Yeah? I can buy a couple extra plots of land, whatever. All these people with all these claims in their minds about what they're worth have been, have been hijacked because they all think they're so wealthy, but what they don't realize is when push comes to shove, there's only so much pie on the earth that can be spread around. Mm. And just because you're telling everyone they're entitled to a bigger slice of the pie doesn't mean the pie is getting bigger. So at some point, there's going to be an almighty reckoning. And normally what happens is 
People wake up and realise that it doesn't matter how much on paper their thing is worth, it's not translatable into a real world thing because there just isn't enough pie to go around. Mm. So this is the folly. Our finite world, we're coming in, we're clashing with overproduction problems, climate problems, overconsumption problems, pollution, all this kind of stuff. All of these real world things are telling us that we need to slow down, we need to consume less, we need to take a step back from this craziness. But over there, in banker reserve bad. bank world, they are telling us to do the exact opposite. They're telling us to borrow more, to spend more, to, they're telling us grow. that, uh, grow. They're telling us that, that increasing at asset prices are a good thing, okay? It's not good, it's not good. Negative interest rates, increasing prices, printing money, it's complete Alice in Wonderland. It is a craziness and it's going to end very, very badly.